Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we're gonna take a look on this pretty interesting circuit. I was studying the schematics of my old VNA, my HP8505 VNA. And guys, it's worth taking a look on these schematics because HP documentation is unbelievable. All the functioning of that VNA is done in an analog fashion. So looking at these schematics, we can see pretty interesting circuit blocks. I found here three or four very interesting topologies. We could take a look on the next video if you like it. But in this video, we're gonna take a look on this differential amplifier here, guys. Look at this, this is a differential amplifier. You can see the differential pair here, but it is using an PNP and an NPN transistor. So this is not the common topology for a differential amplifier. This is a series topology, very interesting. And we can see that the, the positive input is this one here, where the signal enters the board. And this differential amplifier was used to generate a good common mode rejection of the input signal. So we can see that the input, the negative input, is tied to the ground of the coax that is entering here with the signal. So we have positive in this input and the coax ground is connected to the negative input. So here in the collector we have the output current that generates a voltage on this node by this resistor here. This is called a trans resistor because this resistor is doing a resistance transfer function. So we call this the transfer resistance, the trans resistance. So here we create a voltage from this differential input here. We create a voltage here and this voltage is AC coupled to the next stage. This circuit here is from the magnitude detector. So for a VNA, we need to detect the magnitude and the phase of the IF. The IF here is 100 kilohertz. So you have the positive input here, positive input. This is the negative input. Here on the center, we have the virtual GND. So the center of this resistor here is the virtual ground of the differential amplifier. And the differential action here develops a current on this output. And actually you have two amplifiers here. And you can choose the output of one of them using this switch here. So this is a very interesting topology. If we turn on the JFETs, we have a true connection here where we develop a voltage here and this voltage goes to excite the next stage. But if we turn off the JFETs here, guys, now this connection is open, this connection is open, and we have the polarization of the transistors from these diodes here. Look at this, very interesting. So the two diodes, when the JFETs are disconnected, are shorting the output of the amplifier. So actually this switch here, guys, looks like something like this. Okay, where we have the two JFETs here, JFET1, JFET2, diode 1, diode 2. And actually, when the JFETs are open, the diodes are shorting the signal. And when the JFETs are shorted, the diodes are open. So this creates pretty good isolation from this node here to this node here. We have more than 120 dB of isolation. And this high isolation between the A and between the B amplifier is needed to accommodate the high dynamic range of the VNA. So what I did here, guys, is created a simulation of the circuit. And we can see here that the circuit works pretty well. I created here an arrangement of power supplies, of signal supplies, to create a differential signal and a common mode signal. So we can generate a common mode signal of 500 millivolts and also we can generate a differential signal of also 500 millivolts. Why I'm using 500 peak? Because we see that we have one volt peak to peak of input voltage. So, and this becomes actually two sources of 250 millivolts peak. So we can first take a look on the gain of this amplifier, guys. Let's, um, let's create a plot here only of the input voltage here, 500 millivolts peak differential. And let's measure the output voltage 
to measure the gain. So to measure the gain here, we can place two cursors at the peak of the two waveforms, at the peak of this, two, this waveform. So let's take a calculator. So let's see here 3.7 divided by 500 millivolts equals 7.4. 7.4 of gain. Let's annotate this here, guys. Linear gain. 7.4. This. Yeah, 7.4. Power gain here is 20 log 10 of 7.4. And this equals, let's see here. Guys, I use my calculator here <laughs> on the real life. Let's see here, pretty high gain actually. And now let's measure the common mode gain of this setup here, guys. So to measure the common mode gain, we're gonna zero out the differential voltage sources here. Now we are exciting only with the common mode voltage that is equal between the two inputs. So if we run the simulation again, you're gonna see that the differential amplitude is zero and if we measure the individual signals we see that you have the two signals there one over over the other and here on, on the bottom let's take the output amplitude let's see the amplitude 1.34 millivolts so let's calculate it here 1.34 millivolts over 500 millivolts 0026 here and now let's see the common mode rejection we calculate the common mode reje rejection as 20 0 0.0026 enter log negative 51 guys negative 51 db Pretty high common mode rejection actually. So we have 20 log 10 of 0 0.0026 equals negative 51 dB of common mode rejection. And guys, actually I'm recording this video more to show for you how we can learn new design topologies looking and studying old gear documentation. So Tektronix and HP gear, the old, the old ones, has pretty, pretty good documentation and we can always learn new topologies. We actually could try to calculate the gain using the values of the components. So we know the biasing current here, so we can calculate the emitter resistance of the, the transistors and it would be, let's see, 25 millivolts divided by 4.8 milliamps, 5.2 ohms. We know the AC resistance of the emitters. So the AC resistance here is the parallel of these two resistors, okay? The AC current that flows here will also flow through the capacitor. This is why they use this capacitor here to, to separate the control of the DC biasing and the AC gain. Let's calculate this parallel resistance. 1000 times 316. Okay. Divided by 1000 plus 316. This equals 240 ohms. So the total AC so the total AC resistance seen by the emitters are the this AC resistance plus the emitter junction dynamic resistance here and this dynamic resistance here that is equal to the first one actually this is a lowercase r here so we have 240 plus 2 times plus 2 times 5.2 this is almost 255 ohms, okay? So guys, to have an estimation of the gain of this amplifier, we could try to divide the trans resistance of the amplifier, this resistance here, by the AC resistance, okay? This will be an estimation of the gain of the amplifier. 
This also happens because, look at this, this is pretty interesting. They shorted the collector of the second transistor here. So any AC current pumped by this transistor here will be AC coupled to ground directly and will not affect the biasing here, the bias of the bottom transistor. So pretty interesting that they shorted the output of the bottom transistor. Very, very interesting. Let's calculate the gain, guys. Let's see. Is the trans resistance of the amplifier divided by the AC resistance 255 equals 8.4. 8.4, guys. So the gain we calculated is 8.4. Very close to the measured gain. As you see here in the simulation, we measured it as 7.4. Why the gain is different, guys? I don't know exactly. We need to think a little more about this. You can think at home. I will also study more this circuit, but I'm already seeing that we have some kind of negative feedback here. Not exactly negative feedback, but we have actually a feed through of the positive input to the negative input. Here, we are biasing the upper transistor with the voltage of the base of the bottom transistor but of course the exciting signal here will also leak to the base of the upper transistor we see here that the positive part of the signal will leak to the base upper transistor also i don't know if it matters so much i think no but this path here will reduce the gain so this probably is one of the behaviors that cause the gain to be lower in the real circuit. Here in simulation we could also try to generate the differential input and make the common mode input to zero to see if it changes the gain. It didn't change the gain. We can see that we see that the gains continues to be at 3.7. Well guys this was a different kind of video. I hope you enjoy it. I really like studying these old circuits here. I learned a lot doing this and I recommend you to also learn to study old documentation of Tektronix and HP equipments. And here I demonstrated my workflow for studying these circuits. I first study them here on the documentation and I go to LT Spice, I simulate them to see the behavior, to see how it works. I change the values, I see the biasing conditions. And if you look at this PDF here, you see that we have a very interesting amplifier topology here. We could try to simulate. Here we have a no here. Here we have a pretty nice circuit. Look at this. This circuit here, guys, is a band pass amplifier. Look at this, guys. This is so amazing, man. Look at this. We have a two transistor amplifier with negative feedback. So this network here, the input signal goes here. It excites the base emitter junction of these transistors. It generates an amplified signal here that excites the upper transistor that generates the output current here. The output trans resistance of this amplifier here is the combination of this network here. But you can see that this network also generates negative feedback to the first transistor. So this is a feedback amplifier. This, this amplifier has very well controlled gain and the closed loop gain is designed by this network here. And you can see, guys, that why this works. Because this first transistor is amplifying the signal in a different in a differential fashion. You see that the base emitter junction here is actually measuring the difference between the base and the emitter. So it's sensing the base emitter voltage. Here we have an inverting action, and here we have an inverting action again. So the phase here is positive and the phase of the output is positive. So the negative feedback action can be generated by feeding back part of the signal to the base, guys. As the transistor is sensing the differential voltage on the base, it's sensing VB minus VE, the feedback part goes negative and generates negative feedback. Very interesting. And they use a disamplifier actually as a negative impedance converter. Look at this. This amplifier is generating positive gain to the signal. But actually, you can read here that this is a bandpass filter. And we see here the bandpass topology. 
band pass topology is you have an L and a C here, a constant C and an adjustable C, a trimmer capacitor here. And this is pretty, pretty interesting, guys. They are feeding back part of the signal as a positive feedback. Here, the signal is not inverted and we are injecting part of the signal through a very high resistance here, very high resistance. So this is a high resistance. We are feeding back part of the signal to the input as a positive. And why they did this, guys? They did this positive feedback action here to compensate for the losses of the resonance tank. This is pretty beautiful. Look at this. The LC tank has a natural, Q natural, a natural quality factor that in the most part is composed by the quality factor of the inductor and the quality factor is measured by the reactance of the inductor over the series resistance of the inductor. Feeding back part of the output signal of the amplifier as a positive feedback, they are actually placing here in parallel with the tank a negative resistor. So this is very interesting. They are placing in parallel here with the tank a resistance with a negative value. So this resistance here compensates for the losses of the inductor, increasing the quality factor. Look how nice is this simple topology here using only two transistors. A feed through amplifier that is also compensating for the losses of the resonant tank increasing the quality factor, enhancing the band filter in response of the filter. Very, very nice. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. If so, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can support the channel becoming a patron. Link is in the description of the video. And I see you in the next video of Aulatronics.